Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be following a makeup routine that went viral on TikTok. Shock, horror, surprising. And it is a makeup artist. I think she's Aussie. She has the best accent. And she is teaching people how to get red carpet ready. So that's what I'm going to follow today. I'm going to transform this face and feel free to join me. And today's video is sponsored by Dematica, who I've worked with many times in the past. If you've watched my videos a lot, you probably would have heard of them. So not only do they have their monthly subscription, which is what I still use to this day, and it comes in a little tube like this. You go on their website, you put in your different skin concerns, you upload some pictures of your skin, and then their team goes and assesses your skin and puts together a little bottle, which is just for you. But their most recent launch is their vitamin C, which looks like this. So this little bottle contains one month's worth of your vitamin C. It's vitamin C 15%, or it's also known as ascorbic acid. And this is fresh batch ascorbic acid, which basically means that they produce this in very small batches. You can either get sent this on a monthly basis, or you can just get it as a one-off. So it's £12.50 per month when you add it to your Dematica subscription, or you can just buy it as a one-off for £15.50. I do have a discount code which is SOF40 which gets you 40% off your first three months of the full Dematica experience which includes your personalised formula and also the vitamin C. But the science behind them doing it in the small batches is because vitamin C when it hits light and air and also over time it degrades which means that it's not going to be as effective so Dematica have put their vitamin C into a little air pump bottle. There's no light that gets into this because it's not clear. So that way if you choose to get this on a monthly basis you've got your fresh little batch and you know that this is going to work as effectively as possible. Personally I love vitamin C as an ingredient anyway in my skincare because I get quite a lot of acne scarring when I have hormonal breakouts and my personalised monthly formula as well as using vitamin C I find just really helps to keep my scarring at bay and to help it fade a lot quicker. Also vitamin C itself is antioxidant, this one is triple antioxidant protection. It protects your skin from UV and free radical damage and it's incredibly good at brightening your skin so if you have any issues with dullness or just any dark spots then vitamin C is most probably something that can help you and if you haven't tried it I would definitely recommend giving it a try and pure vitamin C is a dermatologist approved ingredient in anti-aging skincare so if you have any concerns with anti-aging it's also really good for that as well in terms of firming and lifting your skin it can also help to boost your collagen so all round it just has some really good benefits and the way that you use this is literally just apply one to two pumps in the morning before you do your SPF and it can noticeably rejuvenate your skin in six weeks and because it's not an oil-based formula it sits really nicely under makeup so you don't need to worry about that so there we go simple as that. And yes, if you do have your Dermatica subscription, which obviously I use this in the evening, you absolutely can be using the vitamin C as well. I just use this one in the morning. And that 15% potency is guaranteed from the first pump of this to the last after your 28 days are up. Also, the Black Friday code is coming soon, so I will leave more information about that on the screen and I will leave a link down below. So that is my skin. Thank you so much Dermatica for sponsoring that part of the video. Hopefully my skin is now red carpet ready and let's put some makeup on my face. So this makeup tutorial comes from a lovely lady on TikTok called Ask Ellen Beauty, but she is doing her whole video with with these like under eye I never know if I put these things on the right way. She also puts on loads of moisturizer and kind of just leaves it on her face, I guess, to like soak in. So I will also do the same. And she starts with the eyes, so let me zoom you in. My makeup lesson didn't turn up, so I'm gonna teach you what I would have taught her. Red carpet makeup is a little bit different to other makeup for two reasons. You're normally being photographed at least this far away, and there is a heap of flash. That means your soft laminated brow and dewy skin will make you look like a greasy potato. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny, I like her. What if I want to look like a greasy potato? I don't. Let's move on. What we need is structure with strategic glow. Structure means framing, which is your brow, your lash, and your lip. I love how simplistic she just breaks everything down. Take your time on your brows and hold the mirror further away so you can see if your eyebrows are balanced and flattering. She seems to be using a brow pomade, which I have personally not used in a very long time, but because that's what she's doing, I guess I will do the same thing if I just get this moisturizer out of my eyebrows. Obviously, everybody has got different styles of makeup, but she seems to fill in her eyebrows one shade, one sort of dimension. I'm just using this little Max Factor eyebrow palette in the shade medium. I don't know if this is still available, but she kind of just goes all in on her eyebrows. It looks like this, by the way, I'm using that shade. But I guess if it is just for red carpets, nobody's doing like a macro close-up shot of your face or you would hope oh my god this reminds me so much of how i used to do my eyebrows did anybody watch me when i filled my eyebrows in like this i hope not for your sake and she said to keep holding your mirror away from you which i think is a really good tip and i do this quite often when i'm trying to get things symmetrical she doesn't seem to do any brow gel or anything it's not about how it looks up close next stop is eyes and i want you to work with the eyes open. This is especially relevant for hooded eyes. That was another good tip. I just realised I missed a step. She did uh, her eyelids with some eye primer. I will just do that one sec. 
I just used a bit of concealer, sue me. The most common mistake that I see with eyeshadow is people working like this. That's fine for detail work, but you need to see how the eyeshadow sits with the eye open and relaxed. She uses some more pinky toned neutral shades and I actually think that the Nimya palette is perfect for this. I'm gonna take this shade here and she says to work with your eyes open. And at the moment she's, whoa, I forgot how pigmented that is. Actually, I don't think I've ever used that shade. So <laughs> I did not know how pigmented that is. So she's keeping her eyes open, which is also something that I like to do when I'm doing my eyeshadow too. So she blends this pinky mauve color through all throughout her que crease, her crease, <laughs> all throughout her crease in kind of windscreen, windshield, wind, what's it called? Windscreen wipers, windshield wipers, windshield wiper motions. You know what I mean? We're not looking at you like this. We're looking at you like this. Make sure you like it back here and then go in to fix the detail. Such a good tip. I'm actually quite shocked at like how big the brushes are that she's using, but she seems to then go in with a slightly darker shade. So I'm gonna take this one, which is called Sassy Classy. She's doing, again, with her eyes open, a kind of smoky wing, I suppose. Oh God, no, hers didn't look like that. Hers did not look like that at all. <laughs> oh no. Let's just go back in with that brush that I used and try and blend that out a bit. So I'm trying to look straight ahead into a mirror to do that shape. Blend over that all like she does. My God though, she made that look so easy and it's really not that easy. <laughs> I find a smoky wing the most difficult thing in the makeup world. Make sure you like it back here. I don't. Let's go in and fix the details. Oh God. I tried to fix the details and I've just made it worse. Help me kind lady, what am I doing wrong? Do I like it from back here? Meh, it will do. Time for liner and I'm gonna trace it in with pencil first to make sure that I love the shape. Oh my God, this pencil is so creamy, but almost too creamy to the point where it's quite hard to work with. Pencil first to make sure you like the shape. I would recommend using a lighter eye pencil than this. This one is brown. It's the Revlon So Fierce Vinyl Eyeliner in the shade Mighty Mocha, but it is quite a dark brown. I would suggest going for a lighter brown. Honestly, I would be quite happy to just leave my eyeliner as the pencil, but she does go in with liquid liner after, but that's in a little bit of time, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'm going to add some sparkle. If you're worried about accentuating crinkles, keep the sparkle on this section of the mobile lid. I love how she says sparkle and crinkles instead of shimmer and like creases. I'm going to take the shade Mr. and Mrs. Tutorials, which is this one. And of course, that is another great tip is to just put your shimmer on the part of your eyelid that moves instead of bringing it all the way up to the top if you are worried about fine lines. Quite a lot of the time, I do bring my shimmer up really high, but just because I'm following this video, I'm not going to do that. I really thought that that shade was going to be more pigmented, but it's actually quite sheer. Let me try with my finger. It'll catch the light in photos without accentuating your crinkles. I feel like I need some more intense shimmer than that. I'm taking the Beauty Bay New Romantic palette and I'm gonna take this shade here, which is called Chintz. And it does actually look more similar to the shade that she's using in the video, so. And some more sparkle. Oh no, why is that also not like sticking to my eye? That is so strange. It's almost like the Nimya, sh Nimya shade doesn't have enough sort of oily consistency for it to stick to your eyelid. It's kind of just flaking away, which is such a shame, but there we go. Is this a test for how many palettes I can use in one video? <laughs> I'm now using the Pink Dreams palette from With Love Cosmetics and taking the shade Pearl. My eyelids are not as shimmer as hers, but that will have to do. How amazing are these shimmers though? I have to Those swatch. are stunning. I mean, what palette really? is that? Time for liner, take your time. No one's eyes are symmetrical, just get it as good as you can. Take your time. I would quite happily leave it at the pencil liner, but I suppose if it is a red carpet, the black probably stands out a lot more. Also, by the way, I know that most people are not going to red carpet events on a daily basis, but I figured if it works on the red carpet and works in photos, then it will probably work for most special occasions. Time for base, you know the drill. This is the part that blew my mind. Okay, let's get up to speed. As someone who has never watched her videos before, she's only just come up on my For You page. I, for one, do not know the drill. Are we supposed to know the drill? Light color anywhere you want to come forward. She just starts painting white on her face. So I guess I'll do the same. I like to lift this. Dark color wherever you wish to refine. Okay, wait, slow down. Some on the chin, some on the forehead, then like little bits at the side of her mouth. Dark <laughs> colour, wherever you wish to refine. Oh wait, hang on, sorry. Under her nose. This looks 
insane. And then the contour, she does all the way under the cheekbone like that. Above her top lip, which is so interesting to me, down the side of the nose. This is the Clinique Curvy Contour Stick, by the way. And then, hang on, let me just take some on the brush. All the way round the forehead. I always do this. Contour is my cardio. <laughs> Oh my god, I love her. She does a bit like either side of her chin like that, which I've never seen before. Contour is my cardio. But that accent was probably horrific. Hello, <laughs> look at me. Now this calls for a thumbnail. She does all the way down her neck. I'm not gonna do that because I am wearing a high necked thing. So I was convinced at this point that she was gonna start blending, but she doesn't. I like a little blush as well. Blush on top of all of this before we've blended it. But yeah, and she's using, I'm pretty sure she's using Rare Beauty Happy, which I do have. So I'll do the same, but she does it quite lie, da lie down. So like there. I find it helps to map the look. Wow. Okay, wow. Okay, wow. So then she starts blending, but it doesn't seem to be in any particular fashion. She's sort of doing the blush first. I actually look like a clown. I call this stage the pretty clown. Pretty clown is exactly what I am. She seems to have sort of loosely blended these all into each other. Oh my god, why is this now not blending? Help! <laughs> Help! Just trying to gently blend out the white concealer. Time for foundation. I'm doing body first, because Scott Barnes said so. Onto the face, and we stipple the dark foundation over the dark sections. You don't need a lot of product for this. For my dark foundation, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Superstay uh, Skin Tint in 06. And for my light foundation, I'm using the NYX Born to Glow in Vanilla. Okay, so put some of that on the back of my hand. This is pretty much just the underpainting technique. So dark foundation over the dark areas. Thing is, does blush count? as a dark area? I do not know. I mean, I don't actually really need any extra product on my forehead because it's so smooth at the moment. That's a flex in itself. But let's just put a little bit of that over. Okay. Light foundation over the light section. So NYX Born to Glow in vanilla. And the light foundation over the light sections. But now most of my blush has disappeared and I didn't want my blush to disappear. Let's go back in with the blush brush, I think. Okay, I get underpainting to an extent, but also it's kind of like you do all that hard work and then it all just gets blended into mush and you lose a lot of the definition and the blush and bronzer and stuff. The main mistake I see at this stage is too much product. You want just enough to marry the sections together. Tap the nose in. See how it doesn't need a lot of blending? Okay, tapping in the nose, but with quite a big brush. Tap, 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 tap. Again, I have pretty much no product left on this brush, but I feel like that nose contour has just kind of disappeared. Maybe I'm too heavy handed with my underpainting, but it just doesn't always necessarily work for me. Tap the lips in. We need to let the back. I forgot about that lip line. I feel like she put on a little bit of more blush sneakily, but didn't tell us. Oops, I slipped. We need to let the base air dry. Lash primer. I'm using the Urban Decay Perversion Lash Primer because that I think that's the only one I've got, actually. Top tip, this product actually works really well in your eyebrows. Mascara. I love the way that she says mascara. I'm using Fenty Hella Thick. I also find it interesting that not a single beauty blender has been used in this video. Try the lash on. She's big, but I like it. Oh, she puts mascara on her lower lashes at this stage, but we've not powdered the under eyes yet. I'll try it. I'm gonna use these ones from Kiss, which I called My Lash But Better in All Mine. You know what? Usually I have to trim down my lashes, but I feel like I can just about get away with those. <laughs> I mean, I hope I can get away with them because I don't have anything I can cut them with right now. Oh my God, when I was in Amsterdam with Steve Madden, I put my lashes on on the coach and I didn't have anything to trim them down with. So I literally used my teeth to bite off the end of my eyelash to trim them down to size and then stuck them on on a moving coach. I should have vlogged that trip. <laughs> and it actually worked. They looked great. I was so proud of myself. Those lashes are so pretty. That was surprisingly easy. Nobody speak, I don't want them to pick off. Time to set and you need a powder with no flashback. These are a couple of my faves. Important, I don't recognize either of the powders that she's using, but if anybody knows what they are, please let me know down below. We need to take the shine from around the nose, middle of the chin, and the middle of the forehead. Hang on, I've just realized that I did not conceal these two little pesky spots. 
just re-blending the under eyes. Powder puff. Powders with no flashback. I would highly recommend the Laura Mercier powder, the Colourpop loose powder. Today I'm going to use this collection one, which does have flashback. I'm trying to use up this powder because it does have flashback. Although I do really like the way it looks and I've been using it kind of in my daily life when I know that I'm not going to be taking flash photos. But I would highly recommend the Colourpop translucent powder because that is such a good powder. Also the Maybelline Fit Me loose powder if you're in the US, the one in the square packaging. That one doesn't have powder. That one doesn't have powder, that one doesn't have flashback. Okay, so taking the shine from under the eyes, I'm gonna go all the way up to that wing. The sides of the nose, the center of the chin, and the center of the forehead. I feel like I definitely need some powder around like this area, because that just looks a bit crazy. But we're following the tutorial. Everything else can be glowy, okay? Going soft to balance. Hang on, she just put more blush on. Everything else can be glowy. I'm gonna use this Beauty Bay blush palette, like highlighter thing to I guess kind of almost set that blush into place, but add back in a bit of glow. She is incredibly blushy. I think she's even more blushy than me. I've lost so much of the definition. I don't know if maybe she went back in and added more bronzer because for a minute it looked like she covered it all up with her foundation and then suddenly she had loads of blush and bronzer on again, so I don't know, I'm confused. Going soft to balance the eyes. So I'm using the NYX Nude Suede Shoes Liner. Love a nude lip. Actually, maybe I need something a bit darker. Let's try a bit of the NYX. I think my camera might have just cut off, but I used the NYX Lip Liner in Total Baller just over the top of that because it was a bit light. And then I'm using this KVD Lip Cream in Blossom. Oh, these smell so nice. This is with beauty mode and zero filter. Wait, hang on. Did she film the whole tutorial with beauty mode on? I am red carpet ready. She does look absolutely stunning. So this is the finished makeup look. I have to say, I really like the eyes. I think they turned out really nicely. Wait, let me just zoom in. I think the eyes turned out really pretty. I like the colors. I like her advice of keeping your eyes open. I think they were all great tips. It kind of reminds me of how I did my makeup a lot a good few years ago, like especially with the eyebrows because they're quite bold. But then I guess on camera, you need to have a bit more color in your eyebrows just because otherwise they do sort of disappear in flash photos. I think the eyes look really pretty. The skin is looking nice. Like I'm looking very glowy. The only things that I'm not too keen on is every time I contour my jaw or use a bronzer like on my jaw because I mean hers was a very warm toned shade as well. It just makes me look like I have a beard. I can never get it to look right. And also as well with the underpainting, I feel like I did a lot of sculpting in the underpainting and now that my makeup is finished you can't really tell that I did the underpainting in the first place and I could have probably just done my normal base routine. So I don't know what I was quite doing wrong there. Maybe I used too much product. Maybe I was supposed to go back in afterwards and add like a little bit of extra bronzer and blush and all of that kind of stuff. However, I've got to say her makeup looks stunning. So there we go, that's me done. I've got to say, I've just gone out into my living room and to look at this in normal, lighting. I mean, it's very dark. It's literally like pitch black outside now. And I've just got my living room lights on, which aren't very bright. But I just want to say like in normal lighting that's not under like big studio lights, the makeup looks flawless. Like it really does look stunning. It doesn't look overly glowy, which is weird, I guess, because I was under such bright lights. It reflects light in crazy places. But in just a regular light, I think it looks really nice. Okay, so that is me done, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was certainly fun to like try something new and experience a new makeup routine. Oh my god, why is there a white dot on my face? there is that a dot of powder what is that i love trying new makeup techniques and it's always interesting to follow someone else's routine and i do not doubt that this works beautifully on the red carpet and obviously you can take different bits of this and adapt it to your own routine i think the end result actually looks really nice but let me know what you think the only thing that i would change probably is like the amount of contour that i have and change the neck bronzing situation but there we go that is me done i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please give it a thumbs up let me know if there are any other makeup tutorials that you would like me to follow I I will leave everything that I used linked down below. And of course as well, if you would like to check out Dematica and their vitamin C, all of the information for that will also be linked down below. And I hope you guys are doing good. I will see you in my next video. Bye.